It's Matt here for Newshooter.com at NAB 2014. I'm with Steve at the Zacuto booth, the Gradical. How you doing, man? I'm good. <laughs> Tell me all about the Gradical. All right, we'll start here. Uh, the Gradical, we've been working on it for, you know, almost a year. Uh, this one is our HD. It's called the Gradical HD. It does 720p, but it's actually much bigger. It's, it's uh, uh, 1280 by 1024, so it's more of a 4x3 screen. And if you put your eye in there, take a peek in there, you can see, is it on? Yep. You see how we put the, we moved the 16 by 9 up, and then now you have these wonderful scopes on the bottom, histogram on the left, real nice waveform where you can read the scales, uh, and then a vector scope uh, on the right. Now you can, the, the beauty of this is you can put all kinds of features, you can, you can drop it to the bottom, put the features up top, you can move it in the center, put the features on the top and bottom, it's totally configurable. There's so many different things you can do with it. Uh, let's talk about, uh, it's a micro OLED. Uh, we scoped the whole world. There's only uh, not that many suppliers of these micro OLEDs, but we found a new one. And uh, we waited. We wanted to do this two years ago, but we waited for this new display to come out. It's 5.5 million dots. Uh, and it's actually more than that because it's 5.5 million four sets of dots, you know, uh, because it's doing the colors individually. OLED, I don't know if people understand it, the difference is when a dot is off, each each dot is lit, so you have 5.5, no, you have 5.5 million times four dots that are lit. When it's not lit, it's black. So there is actual black, and when you look through it, you can tell that it, it looks like it has the latitude of a, of a film camera. You, you, you see like, on there were some black crates here, and you could see the differences in the gray tones on there. Um, now, a couple other nice features that are built into this. Has four programmable buttons. Has a nice joystick menu control. Uh, has a USB stick in the back. You can import LUTs, firmware updates, export LUTs. Uh, for those that don't know, a LUT is a lookup table. You can create uh, two LUT streams in here totally unique to this product. One is for the EVF. So let's say the LUT is, you know, you want to you want to see raw. Okay. Uh, you want to you want to add some color to the raw. You want to have certain scopes on. Great. You can save that Weiss number one in the preset. Or you can export it on your disk, on your uh, flash drive. Now, you can create a whole second LUT for the loop out. So the people in the producer's tent, they could have the image fully colored the way you want it. They could say they want a histogram or they don't want a histogram. They can have whatever features they want and whatever color scheme they want, totally separate from the featured color scheme in the, in the Gradical. And one of the things I really love about this is it's, it's so versatile because I can take this and I can put it on a magnitude of different cameras. And that's a good point. Not only can you, you know, obviously bring in HDMI and HDSDI, when this releases, we are making custom cables for many of the different camera models that, so that you can get the actual uh, information that they're getting on a proprietary EVF, which is important. You know, when you do the the uh, pixel to pixel punch in, you want to see that in here. And I felt that that was necessary, so I have people working on figuring out how to get those cables to do this. And then you only need to buy one EVF, you don't need to buy a proprietary right. EVF that works on one particular camera. I can take this, I can swap it around to any camera I happen to use instead of having to go and buy multiple EVFs. You got it, man. Take a look in there and adjust that diopter with your hand so that it's in focus. That should be pretty sharp. Take a look in here. Yeah, I mean, that one's rubbish. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but, yeah, compared, to, but compared to this one. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is razor sharp. I mean, and plus we're doing a lot in electronics to really beef up the picture. It has a dual core processor, so it's zero lag. You can whip this thing all around like this and you will not see lag. Um, you know, it, it, it took a lot of time and money, but we, we used five different engineering companies. We built our own optical system in here and that's part of it. I mean, the real big thing is making sure that the optics are just, you know, you don't have any fall off on the edges or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a product, I'm really happy with it. As I mentioned this before too, it's like, people seem to skimp sometimes when they buy an EVF, and it's, you think about it, it's the most important part of the camera. It's what you're looking through, it's what you're judging exposure on, right. it's what you're judging colors on, framing, everything. Yep. And I liken it to, 
you know, if you're going to buy a pair of glasses, you can go to an optometrist, get a good pair of glasses. You can go to a gas station and buy a pair for four bucks. They both work, but one of them's going to give you a lot better option. And this is pretty much the best option you can get at the moment. Well, the th I agree with you. The thing is, is it's like uh, there's a couple things that people skimp out on, which, you know, they go all in on the camera. Well, if you have a horrible tripod and you, and you have this beautiful picture, but you can't do a nice pan or tilt, it's kind of pointless. Same thing with the optics. I mean, you need to know exactly if it's in focus or not. These, when you go to a, a, a large sensor camera, it wasn't a big deal when we had beta cams, you know, because there wasn't the incredible shallow depth of field. These things got amazing depth of field, and there is a huge difference. How many videos do you watch on Vimeo where people are wavering in and out of focus? I don't like that. They say it's a creative choice. I say it's a mistake. Sure. Now, this is something else that's new to uh, Zagudo too. Uh, what was the inspiration behind making your own tripods? Well, you know, we're trying to, I mean, you now have this incredible optical system here. Uh, you know, it, it was my other pet peeve. It's exactly what you said. It's like, it really bothers me that a good pod is about 8500 bucks. And, I mean, to me, you know, I mean, some people are buying $700 tripods. There's no way you can put a camera like this on a $700 tripod. It is just you don't have the drag capacity to do that. Um, and you and people do it, and I look at them and I'm like, you know, they don't know. They, they haven't been working, you know, in the industry for decades. So uh, what I wanted to do is try to be able to come out with tripods that were, you know, half the price of what you're accustomed to. Like this one is, it, we call it a Z18. It's comparable to a Sockler Video 18. Uh, at around 3,500, you know, it's about half the price uh, of, a, of a, a video 18, uh, and, and down the line, our 12 version, our 6 version, same sort of thing. Um, but these are great pods. The 18, I, I made it work like how I like to work. It has an eyepiece leveler system that you can add. There's not. That's another problem. Like we like using eyepiece levelers. We like front boxes. You got to have somewhere to put your lenses and junk. I do not know how people got away from using these things, but we use them. We like it, you know. I, I take this lens off. Where's it going? On the floor. I'm not putting a $20,000 lens on the floor. So the idea here was that uh, we uh, that none of the small pods have the capacity. I mean, I, I say anything under an OC, you know, uh, have the capacity to do eyepiece leveling without really going in and trying to tap your head yourself. And... You, you can't do it. We, we went inside and really changed the guts and everything. And I'll show you how it works real quick here. You just loosen the uh, drag and, you know, now I can, I'm, I'm, I'm not, sorry, I'm not even moving my feet, but I can, if you look at the, look at these here, like when I do this, that would be your problem right there. I can see that image. You're never going to see that there. So to really, to really operate with an EVF properly, you have to, you know, you don't have to, but it's nice to have some sort of a, a leveling system. And up until now, you know, the, you, don't, you haven't seen this sort of system on a, on a tripod for this sort of price. Well, yeah, that's, that's the issue. So here, you can get a pod. This pod is approximately $3,500. Uh, and, you know, the eyepiece leveler, this is, a, this is an airy one, and I think it's $400. Uh, I, I'm not going to make the eyepiece leveling. You can get that from whomever. And uh, the front box mount is another $120 or something. So, I mean, for a fairly reasonable, you know, you get an OC pod, you're looking at, you know, 20, over $20,000, you know, or more. Uh, so for a reasonable price, I think you can get into a nice cinema system like this. Okay, thanks, Steve. So if you're coming down to uh, NAB, come down to the Zacuto booth and check out all the products in person. Or if you want more information, you can go to the Zacuto website.